innocent people killed who didn't need to die or deserve to die. They were the stories that would spark the federal police raids on the ABC. Welcome. Right now, Australian Federal Police are still conducting their day-long raid here at the ABC headquarters in Sydney. For the past four months, I've been investigating some of the stories behind the Afghan Files series. 7.30 has pieced together an account of one alleged killing. It's led all the way back to the valleys, peaks and fields of Aruzgan, where for years Australia's elite special forces took the fight to the Taliban. This isn't about questioning the courage of our elite soldiers, men who operated at the tip of the spear. Rather, it's about trying to determine if some of what they did in Afghanistan broke the laws of war. They were working in a, in a highly complex and ambiguous operating environment. The Special Forces had a certain role to play, and that role, part of that role was taking the head off the snake. We know there are civilian casualties in these operations, and we know that that um, not all of them were involved in the fight. The first case we've investigated is about the killings of a man and his young son, both shot in a morning raid on the village of Alabulug. We sent an Afghan journalist to this Taliban-controlled area to speak to the surviving family. Among them, the dead man's son, Esmat Khan. My brother was very close to my father. He would not be separated from him. So my brother was sleeping with my father there when he was shot. The deaths of Bismillah Jan Azadi and his son Sadiq Allah were examined in the ABC's Afghan files in 2017, with allegations some Australian SAS troopers unlawfully shot and killed Bismillah and accidentally killed his son who was with him. In September 2013, Australian soldiers shot and killed a man named Bismillah Azadi. 7.30 has now unearthed new internal files from Afghanistan's Independent Human Rights Commission, some based on witness accounts. We have around 90 reports collected over several years detailing allegations against both the Taliban and foreign forces. For the first time, they reveal key Afghan accounts of critical and deadly incidents in a war fought largely in the shadows. One of these new reports confirms the role of foreign forces, previously reported by 730 to be the SAS in the Alobolog raid, an operation to find a Taliban commander called Mullah Sada. When the raid took place, they climbed into the house. They shot the dog and straight after, they shot my father. Then they shot my brother. That version of events is backed up by these new human rights files, which say that after the foreign forces captured Mullah Sada, they entered the neighbouring house, belonging to Bismillah Jan Azadi. They say one of the foreign soldiers shot and killed the father and son as they slept under a blanket on the veranda. When they came to our room, they tied us up over there and would not let us go. That night, they came and searched our home three times. They left just before dawn. When Esmat Khan emerged, he found the bodies of his brother and father together. My brother's body was riddled with shots like a colander. They had bandaged him and left the bandages on him. This account is supported by this key section in the human rights report into the raid. The witness, a neighbour, says he saw the father and son dead under the blanket which had blood seeping from it. When he pulled back the blanket, he discovered the young boy dead, lying in his father's arms. The child's stomach had plaster over it and there were needles on his chest, possibly an attempt to treat him. The SAS troopers involved in this raid were later cleared by defence after they claimed Bismillah had pointed a pistol at them. In this new interview with 7.30, his son says this was not the case. They said they had found a pistol with him, but they didn't find anything. He was a farmer, he hadn't seen a gun. He was deep asleep when he was shot dead. Our investigation states that um, this, uh, this man was not uh, in any way attacking the Australian forces. He was not a threat, he was a civilian. Esmat Khan says after the raid, his family was called by the local police chief to a meeting with the Australians. They said, forgive us. We said, we will not forgive you. Why was so much injustice committed against us? 
The governor of Aruzgan at the time of the raid told 7.30 that he remembers the Alabolog killings well. Very painful and heartbreaking. They brought the bodies in front of the governor's house. The people, they were sobbing. I called the commander responsible for the raids. I told him about our painful situation and I made an official complaint. As for the reported target of the Australian raid that day, alleged Taliban commander Mullah Sada, he was jailed for six or seven months and then they freed him again. He's free now. Our poor father was killed for nothing. These new files reveal details of another Australian raid from 18 months prior. It was mid-March 2012 and the men of Australia's SAS were on the move in Black Hawk helicopters. That morning they landed in the village of Sarkoum. Their target was a Taliban bomb maker codenamed Objective Young Apprentice. Sarkoum was also home to Haji Sada Khan and his sons Abdul Latif and Hazratullah. My father and I were together listening to the news on his small radio. We were looking at helicopters crossing the hill and they landed close to our home. My father headed to the garden, then they fired at him in the garden and wounded him. When my father crossed into the garden, they fired towards him. They shot him in his right thigh. This new Afghan Human Rights Commission report fills in what allegedly happened next. After being shot in the thigh, it says the foreigners took Haji Sada back to his room and started beating him. A beating that the report claims would kill him. His sons say it was this village mosque where Haji Sada was taken and later found. We were not allowed inside, but we heard shouts and cries for an hour or 30 minutes. When they left the mosque, we got inside and they had martyred him. There were big fat boot marks over his heart. You could see these boot marks all over his body, over his neck also. Haji Sada wasn't the only one from Sarkoum to die that day. There was a young guy named Mirza Khan. He was my age. People told me they have martyred Mirza Khan. The Human Rights Report says Mirza Khan had gone out to irrigate his field. That's when the foreigners came. It says they had a dog that attacked Mirza Khan. It bit him and wounded him. The report then alleges Mirza Khan tried pushing the dog away. But when he did that, the foreigners shot and killed him. It's a version of events backed by Mirza Khan's brother. Villagers showed 7.30 the spot where they say he was killed. It was a yellow Australian dog. Mirza held the dog by its neck and away from himself. They fired at him and shot him. When they came closer, they shot him even more. He was covered in blood. A person couldn't look at him. We didn't remove his clothes. We buried him in them. The Afghan Human Rights Report says seven others were wounded in the raid and that a young boy was bashed with a knife on his back. Whoever they saw, they pulled a bag over their head or placed them by the side towards a wall and they couldn't see. The only other available account of the Sarkoum raid features in No Front Line, written by veteran journalist Chris Masters. And it says that two men were killed that day because they were carrying an AK-47 and a grenade. Haji Sada and Mirza Khan didn't have a hand grenade. He didn't even have a knife. Our position remains the same, that civilians were harmed in this. The two people who were killed were civilians, and the seven people who were injured were civilians. That's what our investigation indicates. The Australians later sent a delegation to meet with the locals about the raid. They did not give us any reasons. They said, we are seeking forgiveness, we were mistaken, we'd been given the wrong intelligence. 7.30 has confirmed that both the Sarkoum and Alabolog raids are subject to the ongoing secret inquiry by the Inspector General of the Defence Force. He's investigating possible breaches of the laws of war by Australian troops in Afghanistan. I strongly welcome this. Uh, the Afghanistan Independent Human Rights Commission has time and again repeatedly asked for investigation of civilian casualties by all authorities uh, from all sides. We sent a detailed list of questions to the Defence Department about the allegations raised in the Afghan human rights files. It said the Chief of the Defence Force will consider the inquiry's findings when he receives the report, and it is not appropriate to comment further. The reality is that this is largely uncharted waters for, for Australia. We're stepping into 
to an area now uh, of potential um, war crimes, potential homicides in an operational theatre. For the villages of Sarkoum and Alabulug, the Inspector General may be the only person capable of giving them the justice they say they're owed. They killed our men. We don't know, by God, why they were killed. The Afghan human rights files are important because injustices have been committed against our people and these injustices should be investigated. Why have such things happened? Why have these people been killed? Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.